Hi folks, let's use the same end mill, but show you six different ways to make the same hole. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So I'm excited for this. Six holes, all identical, mostly the same feeds and speeds, but six different cam recipes. So for those of you that are excited to see our new haws, stay tuned for the end of this video. Okay, so we're gonna come in here, we're gonna deck it off. The first hole, that's your typical 2D adaptive strategy. This is the bread and butter, the best thing. I absolutely love this uh, about Fusion 360 and the HSM cam. It's just phenomenal. Hop into our settings. We're gonna run on the Haas, so we've got 15,000 RPMs, three thousandths per tooth, so that's 135 inches a minute. Optimal load is pretty conservative. It's about 20% width of cut. And we can go full depth or even up to 200% of the depth uh, for a quarter inch tool. That means we could go, I'm comfortable at least, going down to say half an inch. These holes are all three quarter inch diameter, three eighths of an inch deep. Notice I turned off stock to leave. That's probably the only diff thing I really did here that's different from when you click 2D adaptive and just create a new operation. Stock to leave would leave some extra material on the side and on the floor. I turned it off here because I want to hopefully show, we'll take a look at the part when we're done, that this is a bad thing to do. While you do get a great, uh, and you know what, we may rig it here. Yep, 4,000, okay. This is going to, in theory, give you faceting. See this little pop-up? I hope that we should, this able actually shows it's a bad uh, hole, mostly on the sidewall. We should see faceting. So the next one is 2D pocket. I don't use it a lot, and there's it's a trade-off. The downside is it doesn't have the adaptive strategy that I like so much, and I'll show you that right here. Take a look at this simulation. I'm gonna scrub along the bottom here. So it's doing its helical interpolation into the hole, which I love, and that's great. But then all of a sudden right there, look, look at that. That is a problem. We are engaged with almost all of the cutter. Uh, we're gonna overload that tool. There's no way for the chips to get out. And it's gonna almost certainly break the end mill, just realistically. And I'm not ready to do that on my Haas just for you guys just yet. Uh, I kind of wish there was an adaptive add-in or option uh, to this. We can downgrade the maximum step over to say 0.05 and that's what we'll do uh, right now to show this in the machine. So it'll spiral it in, which is fine, but it's not gonna be as smart of a strategy as the adaptive. Why use 2D Pocket or what's the upside? Well, the nice thing under passes is you can check finishing passes. So unlike the adaptive strategy, which is never a finishing strategy, it's always gonna leave some faceting. And in theory, I believe I'm technically correct here that subject to the tolerance, it can actually violate your solid model. So in other words, it could gouge. That's why you have stock to leave on it. But with 2D Pocket, we can have a finishing pass, which means in one cam operation, it's going to subject to your minute maximum step over, quote unquote, rough it out. And then it's gonna come through and you can even reduce the feed rate, pretty cool, give us a finishing pass. And so you can see that here, the spiral out is the quote unquote roughing and then it does a separate linking move, I think, maybe not, I guess not, it's all one thing where this outside circle. So this should give us a pretty good uh, option. I just don't like it because it's not the adaptive. The next guy is an adaptive plus a contour. This is what I do the most often. Why two? Well, the adaptive gets the material out. If we take a look at our settings. Oops. If I keep it the same there. So, and then we're leaving 20 thousandths along the sidewall. I changed it to leave nothing on the floor. What that means, take a look at our front view. By the way, I just got this new plugin down here uh, that lets me toggle to wireframe quickly, which I love. So you can see the red is gonna come all the way down. If we tilt it just a little bit and every all the action is happening at the bottom of my part. 
compare that with the next option. Here I'm doing the same thing, an adaptive and a contour, but I'm also doing a horizontal. Now horizontal is the only option here today that's in the 3D menu, this guy right here. And by the way, this file is available to download for folks that support our channel on Patreon, as little as a few bucks a month, and you can walk through all of this. So what I'm doing now, again, let's switch back to wireframe view, is the adaptive stops above the floor here, and if we take a look at a simulation with no stock on, it's also leaving a little bit of material over here. So it's never gonna cut our final geometry. What we do for our final geometry, we do a 2D contour, that cleans up the sidewall, and then we do a horizontal, which cleans up the floor. Couple things though, on the 2D contour, all I want that end mill to do is clean up the side. So what you wanna do is have stock to leave. Uh, I actually did this incorrectly. I was gonna say, hey, let's say two tenths above the floor there. That doesn't work here because if you remember from the adaptive right here, the prior operation, we're leaving 20 thousandths on the floor. So I wanna stay above that. When the end mill comes in for this 2D contour, I don't want it to touch any material on the floor. So let's change that stock to leave to 0 0.0202. That makes sense. We're gonna say 20 thousandths above because that's the adaptive and then two tenths, or we could say 1 thousandth. It's not that big a difference here above that. Then on the horizontal, same idea. I'm going to leave two tenths on the side. I'm not going to touch that. That's actually already been cleaned up with the contour. So when I cut the horizontal, which focuses on the floor, I don't want that tool to touch the side. So if we take a look at our wireframe here, the adaptive stays up and it stays inside. The contour blows out all the way to the side, staying above, we zoom in here, we can see it's, it's actually above the adaptive, and then the horizontal happens on the floor, but if we do a simulation, it's not gonna touch the side. Never touched. And lastly, two more actually. Same thing. This is actually a new one that I really like. We'll do an adaptive to rough it out. Same sort of adaptive. I'm gonna leave 20 thousandths on the side, nothing on the floor. And then I'll come in with a bore. So that's 2D bore. Here's what I like about this. You're, it's a totally different cutting strategy. And where this can, I think, really help is if you've got a long tool and that tool is subject to chatter because there's a lot of side, there's, there's not enough rigidity, so it's chattering because it's pushing the side. A bore is gonna cut not just with the side, but sort of the leading edge. And as we see is when it runs in here, that can really help give you an, a good, accurate, uh, higher quality surface finish as you're interpolating down through a hole because again you're using some of the cutting force actually where the tool's much stiffer. So we actually just did use this on a job shop job today. I think it'll actually be next week's Wednesday widget. But bore is uh, bore is your friend. And lastly, same thing. I don't actually love this, but I wanted to show it off. 2D adaptive, leaving some stock on the side, and then there is a circular operation. So that reads. For million cylindrical pockets and islands, heights are automatically derived. So it's a it's a quick one, but not a huge fan. We'll see what it looks like, like so. So there's six different ways to make the same hole. Let's head over to the Haas.
conservative uh, feed, but we should get a great finish. So I'm kind of bummed. The uh, sidewalls look pretty damn good on all of them. By far though, the best overall part is, or hole is this guy right here. And that's the one where we did the adaptive, the contour, and the floor. So we basically separated it out, roughing, then finishing the sidewall, and then finishing the floor. The bore isn't bad at all. And it, maybe it's not fair because I also, didn't I could have done a horizontal on the board as, uh, floor as well. Um, unfortunately, I was hoping to show off more. Um, I was hoping that the adaptive looked worse than it really is. Uh, it just doesn't. So you can see a little bit of a gouge right there, but really it's not bad. So maybe a little bit. Uh, well, maybe it didn't quite go as well there. The floors, though, can because I hope that shows through on camera. I mean very interesting picture the floors tell uh really very interesting so the other thing is we use the tool setter to uh, check the tool diameter and that in theory should give us pretty darn good accurate parts and i'd love to know anybody have a cmm this is like just for fun so i don't really want to uh, make a big deal of it but i'd love to send this to somebody and have them tell me either a cmm or even better a profilometer which measures surface finish or maybe there's some other way you should do it but anyway hope you guys enjoyed today's fusion friday hope you learned something more to come folks take care see you soon